what I want to do is I kind of took the array iterator method lab and rewrote it. Um, you're, it's still due. It's still the same lab, uh, but I adjusted it to ask some other questions. So if everyone wants to go over to this array iterator practice, um, we're going to have some fun here. So go into a terminal. CD code, SCI, um, I don't know, lectures. Make a directory called array iterator practice. And touch index.html. Really, you don't even need that. Um, all you really need here is nap.js because we're going to be running these solutions in Node. Okay. And then I want you to copy and paste this giant code block in your app.js file. And then get out of that. We don't need that anymore. So I'm going to kind of walk through some of the problems uh, that we've got. We're going to use each of the array iterator methods that we discussed in the last, um, or when we actually talked about them on Wednesday. Uh, we're just going to get a little bit of practice with them because I realized we didn't really have a lot of practice. So um, we'll do this. Again, your lab for these is due on Monday. It's not a very tough lab. If you are able to get through this exercise, you're going to be able to get through the lab just fine. So. Save these answers. This okay. just bought him at the computer or something. <laughs> How many years he's got? <laughs> I, I know. I just I wanted to be silly. So, um, so here you can see we have an array of developers um, with first name, last name, favorite food, and years experience. Obviously, these numbers are just made up um, because we had to have a sorting example or a reduce example. Um, so the first question is we're going to use filter to filter the array of developers into a new array containing only the heathens that love Hot Pockets. So what you need to do is you need to find, I had so much fun writing this lab, by the way, last night. Uh, you, you're going to need to filter out all of the developers uh, that love Hot Pockets, uh, put them into an array called heathens. So who wants to take a stab at this one? I'm going to need eight volunteers this morning. So volunteer for an easy one if you want. How about this? How about I'll do the typing. You guys just talk at me. What should, what should I do here? Let heathens. Let heathens equal. Developers dot filter. <laughs> OK, and we know that filter is going to accept what? A callback function, right? Mm -hmm. So function person. OK. Um, and then enter the function um, let, I don't know, hot pockets equal, or I guess you return. I don't know, a person dot they food equals hot pockets. Well, that was too easy for you. Let's try it out. That's it. Excellent work. So again, the way that filter works, this syntax might seem a little weird, right? Return, but I don't want to return just one person with, with this. I want to return all the people. There's no for each in here. How's that working? So the way that filter works is it's going to take that argument, which technically doesn't need these pink parentheses. I just did it to be better. All right. Uh, by the way, I'm using arrow functions for this, for the, these examples. So 
it's time to grow up now. We're going to use arrow functions. Um, the person here that we're passing in, what's another word we could have used for that? Person is correct, but developers, developer, right? That would be another acceptable terminology that would fit with what we've done before. Person is absolutely fine because each one of these is a person, right? Um, but we're iterating over these. Filter will iterate over every single thing in an array and whatever matches the return condition will be returned in a new array, right? So all we have to do is set up, here's our iterator. We're iterating over each thing, just like a for each method. Each thing that we pass into this is going to be one piece of data from the array, one element of the array, right? So we're checking each one of these to see whether or not person, which is the thing we're iterating over, dot fave food equals hot pocket. And if it does, we return it and it just pops it into that new temporary array. And when it's done, this will automatically return that array as heathens. I wonder if we can step through this. I wonder if it'll let us do that. Um, let's try using the debugger. This will be a fun experiment. I've never tried this before. So I want to watch heathens. Well, let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so it's looking at, here you go, look at this. You can see that it's looking at David. I think it looked at me already. Can I go back a step? Here, let's start, restart. Run a debug. Heathens, okay. So the first thing it's doing is looking at me. You can see that local, local variables to this function, this method, it's showing it's looking at me, okay? Heathens is not defined. Uh, maybe it's going to wait until the end of this to push all of them. Well, let's, let's see what happens here. So let's go ahead and next step. It looks at David. David doesn't like hot pot. I mean, he does, but his favorite food is lobster. Next one, Shazad. Shazad likes hot pockets. Okay, yeah, that didn't work the way I thought it would. So it's not actually going to put anything in this array until the end. It's not piling things up. Um, So I guess we can't really see that work. What you can see happen though, is that it is going through each of those things one by one. And that's really what's most important here. So just ignore that we did that. Cool, all right. So that we don't get any noise, I'm going to comment out our solution, console log. Next question. This one's a little bit tougher. Map the array of developers into a new, this is not that tough. Map the new developers into a new array uh, containing the first and last name of each developer as strings. So example, it should have just our first name and our last name as one string. Okay. I'm going to, uh, no, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, can I do, oh, this will work. Know that there's a first property and a last property, right? So how would we do this one? Can I try this one? Please. Cool. Um, so it'd be let full dev name, I guess, um, equal full name. Equal full name? Yeah. Is it like this? Yeah. I we want to use it the, an array iterator method, right? So we want to use map. Oh, yeah. Um, map dot full name. What if we took the array that we want, which is developers, right? Uh -huh. And we use dot map on that. Mm -hmm. And then we can use the same 
uh, parameter because each developer is a person, right? So we'll set up our person with an arrow function. It's the same thing as writing function person and then opening it up, it's just cleaner. Would uh, this function include the dollar sign uh, squiggly brackets, first name, plus last name, or? I love that. A... Yeah, exactly. We could return a string literal, okay? Or a template literal. And we can say first name, or it's not gonna be first name though. How do I access the name of each individual thing that I'm passing through? Uh, it, it'd be uh, the array dot first, right? Not the array, the element, but yes. So it's something dot first. What's the something mm -hmm. in this instance? What are we calling it when we iterate over it? Person. Yeah, right? exactly. Plus, or we don't need the plus because we're using yeah. template literal and then just person dot last, right? Let's try it out. Oops, terminal. All right, look at that. Excellent work, air high five. Cool, does anybody have any questions on map? Let me show you why map is gonna be important. Do I seriously not have any? Wow. This might, oh, binge well. Oh yeah, binge definitely well. Okay. This is a React application. So all of our React components are listed in here. Each of these are different components that you're gonna see on your page. I, don't get intimidated by this code. Um, but our, inside of our pages, these are also components. We have an app component. And what we're doing is, let me find a component that's using map. Uh, our profile list page. Okay, so here's the, the high level. What's happening here is when we run this application, it's connecting to a database and pulling down a list of all the profiles that we've stored in our database, all the people that have signed up for our application. And it's passing them down to this component and storing them in state. State here is actually called state, right? We don't just have a bunch of variables and like, yeah, those are our state variables. It's called state, it's actually called state. So it's nice and easy to remember that, right? So just like I mentioned, what we're doing is we are holding state of, it just looks like an empty array now, but this is making a database call. And it's saying, hey, go get me all the profiles that we have in our database, put them in state. This dot set state means set state with the result we got from this function, okay? You don't have to remember any of this. It's just demo and why we use map. So all of our functions or all of our code, uh, all of our profiles will be held in state. So what we're doing here in this component in our essentially render function is we're going to return a list of profiles. And to do that, we're going to map each of those profiles to a profile card component. That's what React does. That's why React is so powerful. Because I can just say, yo, take state and map it to some shit. And some shit in this situation is a beautifully designed profile card that you can see over here. It's just a, essentially a, a bootstrap card. Um, actually, this isn't, this is much simpler than that. It's just the name of a profile. <laughs> but, but we call it profile card to separate concerns. So we're taking that map. I'm looking at this and 
yeah, no, we're good. Um, we're mapping each of those profiles to a card. That is why map is important. You will need to know map. If you don't know how map works, you will not be able to pass the class because this is we use this every day in React. Cool. Okay. Excellent work. Comment that out. Oh, actually, I can leave the solution. Just get rid of the console log. Cool. This one is tough. Because this one's going to require you look some stuff up. I, I would imagine. Maybe not. Maybe you're whiz at this and just know this. Sort the developers using the sort method by last name alphabetically. Okay, let's start what we with what we need, right? We can say let um, alphabetized tized devs. How about ordered devs? I like that better. Equal. We know we're using developers dot map or dot uh, sort. Each one is a person. But is it? How does this function work? It takes two parameters. Right. Let's look this up. Okay. So these are simple examples where we just we don't take any things in. This is just going to organize things by first character. Notice that when you sort something in JavaScript, by default, 1, 100,000, both come before 21, because it's looking at that first character. This is not doing any mathematical operation. This is just looking at the first character for something. Right? So let's go look at some syntax here. Functionless is just like that. If we use an arrow function, so like that, first element, second element. So let's read this here. Uh, optional is a compare function. We're not going to use that. These two are the things that we have to do. We have to provide a first element and a second element. Notice how optional is uh, defined here. It means that we don't have to pass in this compare function, right? We're going to, because we want to specify uh, specify a function that defines the sort order. We have to say, I want to be able to sort these things, right? Uh, and I want to tell you how to sort these things, not just by default. Um, the first element for comparison and the second element for comparison are what we need to toss in here. The reason that it's not going to work is because it's being converted into a string and there's some whole stuff in there. So we're going to have to write this kind of interestingly. But let's go ahead and why don't you guys give it a whack? Let's take a look down here at some examples. Um, here's a good example. We don't necessarily need this uppercase, lowercase thing. It, because the names are strings, it, look, it even gives us sort by name. I shouldn't have shown you guys this because this is cheating. It's not cheating. Map it and then sort the list. Um, we have to use sort. I don't want to use a map. Only sort. The way sort works is it's going to compare two things at a time. And if one of those things is greater than the other, it's going to put it in the right place. So we have to tell it what two things we want to look at. And developers. because sort is right, we're going to sort developers. Maybe what, dev A and dev B? These need to be in parentheses, because we're going to make them an arrow function. Developers. 
Developers? No. Great one. I have a quick question. Does the dev A and oh sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, does the day dev A and dev B like represent the first developer and the second developer in your um, array? The first iteration it will. The second iteration it's going to compare the second two things, and then it's it. This is this is telling you're essentially giving it a rule, and you're going to say if the rule is you're setting up a rule inside of here. So our rule is what's contained inside of a sort method, the rule for sorting. So just okay. to be clear, dev A would be like Ben Manley and then dev B would be David Stinson? Only for the first iteration of this. For the second iteration, it's gonna go on to a different two things. Okay. You, you don't wanna you don't want to necessarily think of that quite yet. What you wanna think of is sort is gonna look at two items in the array. And it has to make a determination to put one of them in front and one of them in back. And what we have to do is we have to give it a set of rules to follow to make that happen. And because everything is going to boil down to a numeric value with sort, is something higher or lower, right? That's what it's gonna look at. So what we're gonna do is just like the example here, we're gonna return negative one or one. If it is a lower value, we're gonna return negative one. If it's a higher value, we're gonna return positive one. Got it. So realistically, we could do this as an else statement because none of our real, uh, names are the same. So we can say if dev A is less than dev B, oh, 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 ternary here. Oh, this is going to be hot. Return dev A less than dev b if that's true we want to return negative one if it's not we want to return one well that's sexy i'll write it the other way here in just a second because i know you guys are relatively new to ternaries let's see if that works see what that does Are we sorting by their first name or last name? Here. Last name? We're not, we didn't give it anything. We didn't give it first name or last name. I wonder what it defaults to. Let's see what let's see how it organizes them. It's not by first name. not by number it just it doesn't do anything to it that's our original array so let's add something in here and let's say we have dev a and dev a or dev b coming in let's do dev a dot last and dev b dot last because we want their last names and now you'll see that all of our developers are in order by last name so when you compare strings, they look at uh, they look at the string values instead of the numbers. Yes, because I was when I saw this problem first, like I thought of it very complicated wise. Like if I were to do this by myself, I would have approached it like create a for loop that goes through each of the each of the names by character, and if it's greater than if the index is greater than the other one, then return that to see the first, does a greater name, but I guess this is way easier. Well, so here's the deal with that. If you do that and you have five things on the list, you compare the first two things and then you put the first two things in order. You get to your third thing and then what do you have to do? If you compare the, the second thing and the third thing and you get your result, do you put the third thing before the first thing or do you put the fir third thing between the first thing and the second thing? I had a problem like that, like with another project, and I just said the variable of the first, I mean, I said the first index to a variable and then compared that to to each of the array. And if it is greater, then said that variable to the greater one. Mm -hmm. We, In order to solve that problem, you, you have to use the evil R word, recursion, oh. functions that call themselves. I hate recursion. You get, 
Well, you get into nasty, nasty problems when you deal with recursion. Uh, and we're going to use it because you have to use recursion to solve some things. Um, but function cause one of right? the what? The function that calls itself. Yes. Think about that. It's a function that calls itself. It's wild, right? We're going to talk about, uh, about recursion and the rules that go along with recursion uh, later on. But essentially what this is doing is you're saying there are going to be two conditions, right? And the conditions in this case are going to be developers. We don't care which developer it is because it's going to look at all of them. It's going to compare all of them to one another and it's going to sort them out. How this works under the hood, no idea. Do we need to know? No, because it does its job. That will, I know that pains some of you that want to know how everything works. Um, I'm looking at you, Josh. Uh, you're just going to have to get over it. If you want to look up uh, how sort works and read about it, you'll be your mind will be blown. It's fascinating, but it has nothing to do with anything really, and what we're going to be using it for. You just have to know that you're passing in. You, you know that when you're sorting, you're going to have two things that you need to sort, and what you need to do in your return statement is provide a rule to sort them. They're easier. With, this is a more complicated example, right? Because I want to sort by last name of an object. So it's, you know, the two objects being passed in are dev A, dev B, and we have to go and do dot last because that's the property we want. And I wonder if we could do this. What happens if we leave? I wonder if it'll do this. No, that didn't do it. I guess quick question. So what's what's the negative one and one doing with regards to the so sort? What this is doing is it's saying, I mean, you could make this negative and you can make the it's whatever. You just need a lower number and a higher number. Because what it's going to do is it's going to compare these two things and say which of them is higher, which one of them is lower. The default that you use in a statement like this is negative one and one. But what it's doing is it's assigning numbers to them. So it's saying if this item is less than this item, it goes on the left. If it's greater, it goes on the right. And it's using that criteria to then compare all of your different things and then placing them by letter on the left or the right. I picked a more complicated example because the sort that they give you is pretty easy in the other one. Does everyone smell what I'm stepping in here? Ish. You're not gonna use sort as much for this course, but it's really, really good to know how to do this because there are gonna be a lot of times when you're dealing with um, a technical code challenge problem where you have some sort of data and for example, if you want to use a binary tree uh, for something, if you want to use a binary tree, you're going to have to have uh, your order or your data be in order. Um, certain kinds of trees require that your data be in order um, when we get there. And there are ways of very efficiently solving problems using trees where essentially you look at uh, if you're trying to find a value in an array of 1 million things, right? And you want to find the, the value of something. Think of it this way. You could look through every single item in that array. It, would that be as efficient as looking and you know the data is in order, right? So if you look at the middle point of that array and say, okay, is the thing I'm looking for greater or lower, greater, greater than or less than the thing in the middle? And if it's greater than, you can cut out the entire first half of that array. You don't have to search through any of that shit, right? So now you have half of the array. You're dealing with 500,000 pieces of data instead of a million. You just cut your search in half in one step, right? Instead of going through each individual thing a million times, you've now reduced that down to 500,000. If you continue to do that, right, your second step, you go down to 250,000. Then you go down to 125, and it just keeps going down. You're, it's a much more efficient way to solve that problem. But to do that, your data has to be in order. And sort is a way to put that data in order. 
we're going to talk about that again in the computer science modules when we get to unit four. I, I have a question about sort, if you don't mind. Uh -huh. um, so what happens if you write it as a ternary and there's a tie and you don't have the else, a, a first zero? Let's try. Uh, let's put another B in here. But let's put me in here that has a favorite food of lobster. It still puts me in order, but it doesn't have any secondary sorting characteristics. So the first me that it comes across will be on the left or at the in the front of the second me that it comes across. Methods have so much power. Yes. These things are a lot smarter than us. That's why we use them. Okay. Reduce. Does anyone have any more questions on sort before I move on to reduce? The last four are like stupid easy. So this is the last tough one. So I tried uh, to use uh, Jero on the sort, but uh, Jero doesn't do it any number uh, than Jero. The first one, like if uh, return if, right? If uh, it is less than, uh, they have the less than negative one, right? So if you do Jero and one, then it's not gonna work. Like this? Yeah. Correct. Um, I think it has to do with the truthiness or falsiness of this, maybe. Because um, if you use negative three, it will work. Right. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure why zero doesn't work specifically. I can look that up. I'd be happy to look that up, get you an answer on that. So what if you did as if else statement? What would it look so like? if you wanted to write this as an if else, it would look like this. Return, or well, here it'd be, if dev A is less than div B, well, dot last. return negative one, else return. Well, you don't even need the statement here, or the brackets. Return one. And that's gonna work the same way. Got you. Cool. I'm going to comment that out and uncomment my sexy code back. And I'll share all these solutions with you guys at the end. Okay. The best way to learn this stuff is to play around with it. You're not going to break anything. Screw around with it. See what gets you the result you need. That's how you're going to learn it. That and reading the docs. It's not hard to come up with these problems, right? Just tweak something. Okay, I'm, I'm going to play around with the same thing, only I'm going to sort them by years of experience, right? Just tweak some stuff in here and make it work. If you wanted to do it by years of experience, you could do, I think you could do this. I think you could get rid of this. I think that would work. No, that didn't work. You still need the other part because you have to say which one is greater and which one is less. So never mind that. Anyway, that sort. Last one with this developer's array. Count the combined total years of experience for all the developers. So we need to do some sort of reduce function to add up all of these numbers. 
Could we do it with a for each loop? Yes. We're not going to in this example because I want you to use reduce. Okay. So let's call it dev xp equals developers dot reduce. And what does our reduce method take? Two things. An accumulator and a number. An accumulator and a number. The what? <laughs> an accumulator and a number. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, it, 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 sorry, sorry. It takes, it's okay. It takes an accumulator and what, and what we're iterating over, which we want to be a number, but it's not right now. It's an object because it's going to be an object within the array. So again, this is going to be person, right? So what do I want to do in here if I want to return a number at the end? Oh, also, what else do we need in here? We need to say that we're starting our accumulator at zero. Do we need to do that? No, it'll work without that, but that's best practice. So how do I make it add the person's years of experience to our accumulator every iteration? This one's probably easier than the one before. Is it accumulator plus person dot years experience? Yeah. It's console logic. One seventy three. Is that right? Uh, you still have two of you. Oh, that's why. I was about to say, I thought I got a different number last night. Yeah. Cool. That's 108, 10, uh, 125 plus 7 is 32, 41, 49, uh, 49 and 7 is 56 plus 62 is 68. Yeah. That's right. Cool, good work. Yeah, reduce wasn't very hard for that one. Let's do this. This is kind of a generic um, arrow function question, but when you're writing an arrow function, similar to all the other functions we've written, every time you wanted to write something new, you can just go down to the next line, like on to 54. You don't have to put any kind of comma or anything between them. Is the only thing that's really changing what you're doing on 52, which is instead of writing function yes. parentheses. Other than that, yes. the inside is the exact same. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just think this looks a whole lot nicer than uh, developers dot reduce function acc person. I I, just, I like the way this looks better. I'm granted you don't have this half of it, so you don't get to see the full difference. It's just it's just bulky and I know it's a function. I'm a developer. I know how functions work. So it like, it, this just appeals to my eyes better. If you like writing it this way, write it this way. No, it's fine. I, I want to get yeah. used to writing arrow functions. It's just, um, I want to make sure that I'm learning them properly. And the examples we've done so far have just been one liner. So then I was just making sure that everything inside is written the same. I gotcha. Can I, sorry, I have a question about like arrow functions. Sure. Um, this is, I guess, tangential to them, but will, would we get like dinged on in an interview, a technical interview if we don't use arrow functions? Okay. Not at all. Not at all. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Unless they explicitly tell you not to use arrow functions, but that'd be really weird for an employer to say since arrow functions are awesome. So 
Cool. We got a, four more of these that I'm sure we can knock out in the next 10 minutes because I'm going to send you on a break at 9.05. Okay. Now we have some pets. We have uh, Ruby and Franklin, who are my pets, Liam, who's David's pets, pet, uh, and then Ralph the llama because I needed a llama in here. Um, each one has a name, a type, when they were born and a microchip number. Why you would want to microchip your llama, I have no idea, but whatever, just roll with it. Okay. Array.prototype.sum. Check if at least one pet is 20 or older. I volunteer. Okay, do it. It's easy. Um, let, <laughs> let has age equal pets dot I wasn't really sure to do pet style what, but I just did some because that was in the, in the other lab we did. Um, parenthesis pet arrow function pet dot born um, greater than or equal 2001. And then closed up. Did that work? It worked for me. Okay. Here's a fun example. This is a real, I'm so glad you wrote the code this way, Darby. This makes me happy because watch this. If we're going to console log it. Is it wrong? <laughs> it is right. It is right. It is right. But it's demonstrating another thing about arrow functions that I was going to tell you guys, but I was like, ah, I don't want to get into that right now. Um, oh, wait. The line comes back as true, so I don't. I do something. Let has age equals pets. Oh, less than. Less than or equal to 2001. False. No, I put pet dog. Right yeah. Okay. Pet stop some. Let's see his pet. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. I can like slack you what I put. It worked. It came back as true. Did you have a return in here? Um. No. Why don't you slack me what you have? Yeah. I did. And it comes back as true. Okay. Okay. This is why. Does it matter that it's on the same line? Yep. Okay. Oh. This is one of the magical things about arrow functions. This is what I was going to demo for you guys. First off, why don't I have to put a return statement? Let me show you this. If I were to do this and say return, it's going to say true. But if I put it on one line, like this, it still works without the return. What the F? Maybe kind of like a ternary where you don't have to put the word because it automatically knows. If you write an arrow function in one line, it knows already that you just want to return something. So technically, if you wanted to put this on two lines, I think you could do this. And that would still work. Yeah. You don't need the parentheses or the brackets. If you have one statement in an arrow function, it will implicitly return something. Arrow functions implicitly return things. That's one of the fun additional magic properties of arrow functions that we never got to talk about. We're going to get into why that's important a lot more later in the class. But just one thing to watch if you're using arrow functions is sometimes you, you get to use additional properties of those arrow functions and leave things off like that. I'm going to put it like this. And I'm going to put the these back. Because that's how I want you guys writing it for right now. But you could completely leave those off if you wanted to. 
Yeah, it shows it the, the way that Darby showed it in the MDN file, I mean, a document. Oh, cool. Yeah, so they're using the shorthand for that. That's good. Sweet. Excellent work, Darby. Okay. This one's easy. Check if every dog is a pet. Pets dot every pet. And what condition do we want? A pet equal to the string dog. Like this? Yeah. It would be pet dot type, no? Yeah, oh. there it is. Cool. Let's console log it. We should get false for that, right? Because we got a llama. Perfect. Let's test it, make sure it works without our llama. Good. Okay. Find. Find the pet with a microchip num of two four three two three four. Let found pet equal pets dot find pet arrow function return what pet dot microchip. Yep. Equal to. Is that a string or is it? Yeah, it's a number, so we can just say the number. Four, three, two, three, four. And got a console log it. Hey, look at that, Franklin. Franklin's a good boy. He's my 14-year-old border collie. And finally, find index. Find the index of Ralph the llama. A couple ways to solve this. So let's say let Ralph idx equal pets.find pet or pet what? What do you guys want to use for this one? Here's, here's Ralph. So we, want, we could do it by Ralph, we could do it by type. How about pet.name equal Ralph? And would it be uh, IDX is what we're doing now? Uh, find um, IDX. Oh, God, yes. Index, my bad. Yeah, thank you. Console log Ralph IDX. Three, because he has index zero, one, two, three. Okay. I'm gonna copy paste. In that example uh, number seven, or um, shouldn't it be equivalent to? You put equals. You're right. Uh, let me edit that. Don't copy that code yet. Don't copy that code yet. Don't copy that code. It's Did still Franklin right. have? Yeah. So why? It shouldn't. That's a bug. Okay. Um, it that should not work. Um, in in fact, it's not actually working because it's returning Franklin when it should be returning Ruby, because the number we're looking for is two four three two three four. So it's actually returning the wrong one. It's returning the first one because we're reassigning a valuable, a variable. I didn't even look to see if my solution worked. I just saw one thing and figured that was it. Thank you for pointing that out. Who pointed that out? That was me. Cool, thank you. Here's the final code for that. Cool. Um, 
the other class will be with us in 10 minutes. You guys can take a break. Um, we're having some fun today.